Hello, welcome back. In this week's Adobe Illustrator tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create your very own 3D mock-up. The first thing we need to do, create a new document, 2500 by 1500 pixels, and then select the rectangle tool and just drag a rectangle over your artboard. Change the fill color to a light grey colour. If you want to use the same colour I'm using, it's E1, E3, E5. And then just lock the rectangle layer from within the layers window to stop it from moving. The mock-up we're going to be creating is going to be based on the iPhone X. So select the rectangle tool again and just click anywhere on the artboard to bring up the width and height dimensions. And you want to enter 1125 for the width and 2436 for the height. Change the fill colour to a white and then just resize this down holding the Alt and the Shift key just to constrain the aspect ratio. With the rectangle still selected just round off the corners using the corner radius handle. Obviously we can adjust all this uh, later on once we apply the bevel effect. Go to effect at the top, 3D extrude and bevel, and the settings you want to use is 31, minus 46, 29. Let's have a look what that looks like. For the bevel, we'll change that to rounded, and the surface will change to diffuse shading. And then what we want to do is just adjust the, the height which will adjust the roundedness of the edges and the depth which will be the thickness of how it appears. So for the height I reckon something around 30 and then the depth maybe maybe 55 and then just press OK. While the shape is still in this state we can actually make any further adjustments to the shape if we want to so we can actually make these corners more rounded and it will automatically adjust the the 3d shape underneath or if you want to make it wider it automatically updates we can also from within the appearance panel or we'll go to window appearance if you just click on 3d extrude and bevel we can actually go back in there and adjust any settings or any of the angles that we might want to adjust and just looking at this shape now, me personally, I think it's a bit too thin. So I'm just going to grab the right anchor points and just make it slightly wider. And then perhaps just adjust the overall size. Once you are happy with the shape, then what we need to do is we need to expand its appearance so we can make further adjustments to it. So go to objects, expand appearance. And then we need to ungroup all the layers. So go to object, ungroup, object, ungroup. And the reason we do it two times is because there's groups within groups which basically need to be ungrouped. So what we're left with now are the individual shapes which make up the 3D shape. Now in some cases you might not actually end up with a flawless shape. As you can see from my shape the path for whatever reason seems to go to go in at this edge but it's easy fixable so just selecting that layer I can see that it's within a clipping group so if you just select that clipping group right click and then go to release clipping mask and then what that will do is it will just remove the mask and show the shape within that mask so once you've fixed any parts of the shape which need fixing or further adjustments what we want to do next is isolate the screen in its current position from the rest of the shape. So select the, the top layer, so the screen layer, and then from within the layers window, just lock that into place and then select all the other individual shapes from within the pathfinder. If you don't see it within your toolbar, just go to window, pathfinder, and just select the unite option to unite those shapes together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna manually add the the shading for the edges and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now we've united all the edge shapes together as one shape. What tends to happen with the 3D extrude tool 
is it leaves loads of stray little points. Even if I just click on the shape, you can see all these little blue dots are all stray little anchor points. And basically, what we need to do is we need to remove them. So the easiest way to do that instead of going selecting the pen tool and obviously selecting each point and removing it manually the quickest way to do it is to actually select the compound path so we'll select this shape within the compound path by double clicking it twice so once twice select that that middle shape and go to edit cut so that's saved now to the clipboard in isolation mode if we right click it and go to release compound path and then select everything and unite it together. Press Ctrl Y and now all these points are gone now. We've got a nice clean shape. So then if you right click or go to edit, paste in place the original shape which we cut. Select both shapes together. Shift M on the keyboard for the shape builder tool. Select the Alt key on the keyboard and then remove that shape from within that other shape and then what you're left with is basically what we originally had but without all the little stray anchor points. Next we want to drag a copy of this grey shape to the side so we can start adding the shading. So to do that click and hold alt and drag a shape across. Flip the solid fill to a stroke fill and then change the stroke weight to about 6 pixels. Double click the shape to go into isolation mode. Then select the first inner shape. Go to edit, cut. Double click to come out of isolation mode and then go to edit, paste in place. And that, what that does is it puts these two shapes on their own separate layer so we can apply a different colour to each individual shape. The way the effect works is we apply a different colour to each of these strokes and then we apply a Gaussian blur and then when we apply a clipping mask to it it clips the bottom blurred bit of the bottom stroke and the top blurred bit of the top stroke the blurry bits in between the two strokes effectively makes up our shading so that our shape should end up looking like it did when we applied the 3D extrude effect before we united all these smaller shapes together. So starting with the top stroke, change it to the colour white. And then we want to increase the stroke weight so the white bit touches this grey top bit. Otherwise you end up with a grey dark shadow on the top edge which we don't want. So increase the stroke to about 38. Then go to Object Expand. Then the dark grey stroke underneath change to a darker variant of our background colour. So something around there. Then change the align stroke option from within the stroke panel. If you don't see the stroke panel go to window and then stroke. And change the align stroke to the middle option which is uh, basically changing the align alignment of the stroke to the inside. And then expand the appearance of the stroke. Select both shapes and go to Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur, 10 pixels should be enough. Press OK. Then drag another duplicate of the sides of the phone. Drag across and position over the top of the two blurred shapes. Then from within the layers window just drag that shape to the top. Select all three shapes, right click and go to Make Clipping Mask and as you can see it looks like the shade in which was once applied to the side. With the clipping mask applied we now need to move this shape back into its original position but first select your two shapes and change them to the colour white then select your shadow shape and just move that back into position so it all lines up and then our screen layer we want to make sure that's on top. So now we have our overall shape finished, what we can do is we can now start adding the shadow underneath. So make a selection around everything, object, group, then holding the alt key, click and drag a duplicate across. Unite all these shapes together and then go to effect, stylize, feather. And the reason we're using feather and not a blur is because the more you blur, 
the edges tend to become straight and it just looks unnatural. With the feather, it would just tend to get a more realistic, uh, more realistic look. So around 80 pixels should be fine. And then change the, the color to a darker shade of the background and then move that into position back over the phone move the layer underneath the group so it sits underneath and then using the arrow keys and the shift key we can just nudge this down until until we're happy with it and what we can do now is I think we're ready to move this into Photoshop and actually turn this into a usable mock-up so the things first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to select our background layer and copy the hex value for the color in Photoshop I've just created a new document 1920 by 1080 and I'm just going to fill the background layer with our colour. Head back into Illustrator, lock the background layer and then just select our phone, edit, copy, back into Photoshop, edit, paste and then just paste in as a smart object. Size is OK at that size so we'll just press OK. Using the rectangle tool, click anywhere on the canvas and then in the width and height box we want to create uh, the screen size which matches uh, the current iPhone, so the iPhone X, which is I believe 1125 by 2436. Change the colour to a black, something which is uh, easy to see. Then don't resize or anything, just right click, convert to smart object. Now our rectangle is converted to a smart object, what we can do is we can just resize this so we can see it all before we actually distort the shape of this to fit our 3D mockup. If you double click our vector smart object, it will open it up as a new instance within Illustrator. And what we want to do is just change or we'll select our screen layer or our screen shape and just change the color of it to something which stands out and allows us to see the boundaries. Hit save, back into Photoshop, select our screen layer, our black screen layer, go to edit, transform, distort, and then what we'll need to do is distort each corner so it matches the angle of this blue shape. So holding the control key, select each corner anchor point. I'm just going to do this roughly and then tidy it up in a minute. So zoom in and adjust each corner so it matches the angle of our phone screen. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to mask. We're going to mask this up anyway. Something like that. Head back into Illustrator. Just undo the color change and then hit save. Before you go back into Photoshop, just select the uh, the screen layer. Edit, copy, edit, paste into Photoshop. Again, paste in as a smart object because we didn't adjust the size when we pasted in the vector artwork. This screen should be basically the size that we need it. Make a selection around the screen mock-up and then just vertically and horizontally centre our white screen over the top of our black one. Load a selection around the white screen and then select our black screen layer and just press the mask icon and then we can just delete or just hide it for now. What we can do now is if we just double click our smart object, create a new blank layer and then just hide our black layer and whatever we paste into this area now so for example I'll just paste in a screen from one of my previous tutorials save it and that automatically now updates on our phone and then obviously you can use this now for um, website mockups or you know whatever you want to use it for And that's it for this one folks, thanks for checking it out, if you enjoyed the video be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and also check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.